Today we're going to be solving this equivalent values problem using simple interest. On March 1st, Lily borrows $2,000 at 6.25% interest. She makes equal payments on May 1st, July 20th, and September 1st, then pays the remaining balance of $500 on October 1st. What is the size of the equal payments using October 1st as the focal date? So whenever you have a question like this, one of the best places that you can start is with a timeline. So here's the timeline marked out. We have that initial loan of $2,000 that she takes out on March 1st. And then we have three equal payments. And I don't know the value for these yet, so I've marked them with an X. That's what we're going to be looking for. I've also marked that final $500 payment on October 1st. So where we need to start here is by calculating how far each of these transactions are from the focal date. So the first one, it's actually pretty good. We're looking at the time from September 1st to October 1st. And one thing to note is that since October 1st is the focal date and it's the farthest value, everything that we have is going to be moving forward in time. So when we calculate from September 1st to October 1st, you just need to know how many days there are in September, and that's 30. So that'll be the number of days to move us that one month forward. Now when I come here, I want to know July 20th to October 1st, right? That's when the second payment is happening. And for that, well, I already know how far it is from September 1st to October. So I'll just calculate July 20th to September 1st and then add on this other value. So to calculate July 20th to September 1st, well, if there's 31 days in July, I need to first add 11. So that gets me to August 1st. And then 31 days in August, so I need to add on to that. Um, and that gets me to September 1st. And then I already know this time from September to October. So I'll just add that as well. And that should give me 72 days um, from the second payment to October 1st. Okay, so now the first payment that we had was on May 1st. Let's calculate that time, and we can just, again, go May 1st to July 20th and use this other value here. Um, so May, that should have 31. And then June has 30. And then we need 20 more for July to get to that July 20th. And now we can add on our 72. And okay, let's see, this should get us to 153. So we should have 153 days here from when this first payment was made to our focal date of October 1st. And then let's finish this off. Here we're gonna go March 1st to May 1st and then add on our other value. So March, that gives us 31. Since March has 31 days, and then April has 30. And then that takes us right up to May. So now we just need to add on our 153. Which should give us 214. All right. So now that we have all of these dates calculated, let's go ahead and put that onto our timeline. All right, so I've just marked all of these on our timeline, um, and now we are ready to set up our equation. But to be able to do that, we have to bring everything forward to the focal date and do the calculations for that. So what we want to do here is evaluate each of these values at the focal date. We're going to use the future value formula. S is equal to the principal times 1 plus rate times time. And I filled that in for this first one. So we have our starting loan of 2000, that's our principal value. And then we're going to do one plus, we have our rate here. You're given 6.25% in the question. So that turns into our 0 0.0625 when we divide by 100. And then we have the number of days to the focal date, our 214, and just divided by 365 to get it into years. And when I do this calculation, I have that the value of my loan at the focal date is 2073.288. So 
So let's do this now for each of the payments. We need to bring forward each of these equal payments in time. So notice that for all of these, x is always our principal value, but we're just varying the number of days. So this first payment was 153 days to the focal date. That's why I have this 153 here. The second payment was only 72 days. The third payment was only 30 days. But that's the only thing that changes in this formula, right? They're all at the same rate, so we don't need to worry about any differences in that. And that will give us these values for x. Notice that we don't have any calculation to do with the 500 because it's already at our focal date of October 1st. So now that we have all of these numbers, we can go ahead and set up our equation. And to be able to do this, really the essential thing to remember is that the sum of all of these payments has to pay off the full loan, right? So we have all these payments equal to the loan. And that's what I've done on this side. I've set all of my payments over here. So each of these equal payments determined at the focal date, like we did on the last slide. And then I have this 500 as well, that final payment that Lily makes to pay off the balance. And that has to be equal to that final value of the loan. And from here on, we just need to arrange for x. So in my first step here, I've moved the 500 to the other side of the equation. And I want to add up all of these numbers in front of the x to figure out how many x's I have. When I do that, I have that 3.0436x is equal to 1573.288. And now from here, I just need to divide both sides by 3.0436 to get x by itself. And I get a final answer of x equal to 516.92. So each of our equal payments are equal to $516.92. And that's our final answer for this question.